so when we talk about experience i mean we are talking about experience that someone can use so it's not static it's dynamic and you have to have multiple touch points and you know actions that user performs to you know achieve the goal that uh, you know they are aiming to achieve so if we go on to the next one it said as uh, i mean uh, a workflow says defines the sequence of actions to uh, to be performed to achieve a goal as simple as that for example uh, let's take uh, you know one example that is on the right which is you know providing feedback so there is that scenario in which we are saying kd grant after two days visited dr ben richard for the problem of feeling more thirsty uh, then usual and num- numbness and she is feeling far better extremely satisfied with the treatment right that is the context and she wants to visit the website to provide uh, you know positive feedback to dr ben richard and thank him that is the goal what she wants to do is she wants to provide positive feedback there for which she is doing something with the experience right so there are different stages uh, for the goal that she uh, you know she is uh, wanting to achieve right so let's see so f- first stage is home page from home page she goes to appointment history right from appointment history actually she has to log in because she wants to provide a feedback uh, to a doctor she has looked in right so she wants to access her accounts uh, to see that history so she does that and in history she you know click on the action which is i want to provide feedback to the doctor and she does that right she goes to that and she writes her feedback and she submits it as simple as that so there are different stages that you can see right four different stages right in which there are specific actions in the middle if you see so in home page you see appointment history is one action that she is doing so that she can actually get to the next phase which is login here once she she is done with you know she's uh, she gets the otp by sending it and then you know receiving it back and then once she is done she can get to the next step and then uh, from there she, uh, she can provide the feedback and submit the feedback so these are different stages in which a user is performing different actions so this is the whole workflow right in which you are talking about scenario the workflow i mean the yeah flow of the experience in which you have stages or and the actions that are there and you are describing what happens when you are in that particular stage or screen so here you are defining patient can log in sign up by providing the mobile number patient can proceed to the next step by clicking on request otp and whatever a user can do you are describing that and this is just an uh, see you an idea of how the overall system works you know what are the different touch points and from which action to which screen or which stage the flow is moving and how goal of the workflow right so what are the uh, important components of a workflow so as we saw right the first one is scenario and the uh, second one is the workflow in which we are talking about logical sequence of steps and primary actions for each step that user needs to perform to get to the next level in the uh, in that sequence and then description for each step like in each stage what are all the things a user can do right name for each step because you have to name so how do you measure when you are doing uh, you know designing an experience how do you measure the load or you know the amount of work that you have to do one way is through measuring by naming each of these steps like you can name each of these screens and we'll be talking about it in detail but that's the overview and you connect it from which action you are connecting what phase and how of course you have to plan for all the errors and you have to evaluate if this is my workflow what are the pros and cons of this particular experience and if the i am doing the other variation what are the pros and cons of that the first one is scenario right so a scenario is created with the following components right so there is context there is action and there is goal and you have been taught about it in your uh, heuristics evaluation class so we'll not spend much time on this but we can still look at an example so for example if your scope is find and book a ride in context of caps right so the context can be simply john is a software engineer working in hyderabad one day he got late to work and hence decided to travel through a cab right so the action that he is doing is he opens the app and looks for a cab and the goal that is aiming for is to book it at the earliest right so the goal is to book it but you see there is a metric involved he want to do it as soon as possible so i know that when you were doing your heuristics you defined your scenarios and it was kind of hit and miss 
So this scenario definition skill, you need to get nailed down yeah. without any doubts again, right? So a lot of times, if you look at the metric, right, to pick it at the earliest. So what is the metric? Speed is the metric. Action. He opens the app to look for a cab. So that is the specific uh, experience that this person is selecting, right? It's a mobile experience. The context is he's late to work. So there is a rush. There is a hurry. You can see that. And why does he want to go through a cab? Because it's probably much more easily available. So when you think about that, you can't just say that, you know, hey, I'm going to create an experience. So this is where the disconnect comes in, right? If there's a disconnect between your scenario and your workflow, then there's going to be a problem. Because if you say, hey, I'm going to allow people to sort by distance. Then is that important for this scenario? No. What is important is find the guy that is available, the time. So that is what you need to be thinking is this is you have laser focus on this scenario. If you do not define your scenario correctly, then your focus is diluted, then your workflows are wrong, then your visuals are wrong, then your design overall design fails. Okay. So we keep talking about connecting the dots. So make sure that scenario, writing a scenario is something that you are doing very, very cleanly and crisply. Okay. One of the advice that we give to everybody is, if you can explain in 10 words or less, do not use 20. Because the more words you use, it's like, it's okay, you know, uh, he's work going late, so he's deciding to travel through cab. And oh, by the way, he's also looking for this. He's also looking for that. And now when the user has 10 different requirements, now you don't know which requirement to satisfy. Whereas if you have 10 words, you don't have a choice. So you have to choose which is the most important one. Okay, so make sure that, uh, you know, your scenarios, you're critiquing each other. When you do peer reviews and all that, you also critique each other on the quality of scenarios. You have to do that. And then you practice it. That is what is going to get you to your, uh, you know, a crisp scenario gives you an awesome workflow, which gives you an amazing product. The next step is creation of the workflow, right? So how do you do the workflows? You, defi you have defined the scenario. Now you have to define and name the screens. And uh, you have to add the descriptions, provide connections, but let's, let's talk about each in detail actually. Right. So first step is you define the name, uh, define and name the screens that you are planning, right. Which we call the stages. So ideate and come up with a logical flow of the scenario uh, defined, right. Give a relevant name to each screen. We'll look at the example. Also, the name should match with the screen descriptions and the actions that you are doing. So then uh, there is, you can say home page. If you are logging in, it's login and things like that. And the name should be easy, simple and easy to understand because the whole idea of doing the workflow is you should be able to understand the flow in very less time in minutes, right? So for example, you have login, you have sign up, you have home page, then you have open slash offers. If something is changing in the same screen, so you can name it like that. For example, in home page. Imagine there is a pop-up. You can say, okay, it's so, uh, slash offers. That way you can do it. Add descriptions for all these stages. So let's look at the examples. This is an example, right? So here on the right hand side, you see two examples, right? So above you have the screen name and below you have the description, right? So you should never do something like the screen will have two input fields with white border. There will be a company logo on top of the screen. There will be a login button to accompany it with, you know, a checkbox to agree terms and condition. Those are all UI talks. We are not talking about UI now. We are planning the experience, right? We are planning what you can do as a user. We are not looking at UI elements because a certain task can be addressed through different kinds of UI solutions later. So for example, user can enter his credentials like email and password. Right. So you, we are talking about something that user can do. User will have the flexibility, uh, flexibility to use social login. You're not defining that there will be buttons, but you are just saying you will have the flexibility to do it. So then later you can go and you can talk about, okay, I'll put buttons on drop downs or things like that. But here you are just talking about all the things that a user can do at this particular screen. provide connections so you have to create a flow right when user does certain action to which stage they are going right for example in the uh, below image if you are drawing a connection from green to an action it doesn't make sense right you have to always draw this connection from a c uh, action as call to action uh, to an screen 
to whichever is, it is relevant right for example if you are in home page if you are clicking on search you are going to search results in which if you are you know selecting any particular instance and then you are saying i want to view the details so you are clicking on that action and that's how you are going to cap details and from there you are booking it. and then there is another scenario that you can plan separately when you are writing that and it, you, then you can think about it there identify potential error states and for which if you have gone through the workshop you have uh, you know you have learned that in detail but uh, when you are doing the workflow there will be a lot of error states in different stages for example in login there can be one error which is the login or password is incorrect right so you cannot log in so you can document that error and you you can uh, you know describe it what to do and how to handle that error the other error that can happen is when you are searching you might not find anything right so that is error number 2 that also you can describe so if you are doing that you are planning for those edge cases as well when you are planning the happy path uh, same way in payment details also when you are making payment there can be a lot of details uh, your payment is not accepted or not working or the platform i mean the gateway itself is not there you can plan all those errors in detail and you can number accordingly this is just an example but you can number accordingly how many errors are there you can number them and you can document them and you can plan for them the next is you you have to document pros and cons because it is not that if you have one scenario the first workflow that you are coming up with will be the best workflow for you so we'll we'll go through the example as well but i'm just talking the structure of it so for example what is good in the flow you document that are there any loopholes right is it it has any does it have any loop, loopholes or disadvantages in terms of speed effort or something you document it right will the user face any problems with this flow you document it is the is this the most efficient flow for the scenario or not right so all these things you can ask and you can document pros and cons for each of the uh, workflow so i'll show you an example so something like this consider this as a template of a workflow for a scenario right so you are doing the scenario you are drawing the flow you are documenting the description you are documenting the name you are documenting the action the error states and also pros and cons and also the problems that you have solved in this workflow let's look at the ideation part now right so you can use different metrics like there is pre speed increasing speed there is reducing the effort right there is recognition over recall and there are a lot of metrics like that that you can you know explore and identify and you can design for that and we'll be looking the one of the examples also one thing yeah. i just want to say is throughout this training program your heuristics will come back again and again if you are not familiar with the heuristics take a sheet of paper print it and put it next to your screen okay so you're always looking at it because you could just take any design take any design any workflow anything right at any level at any atomic level okay even a widget level you can say how do i take this widget and make it recognition rather than recall you can look at it at a design pattern level where you have multiple widgets working with each other and you can say how can i make it recognition rather than recall you can look at multiple screens at a workflow level and say how do i make it recognition rather than recall you can apply the same question again and again but my point is again for a lot of people people assume that either i am really good at ideation or i am not good at ideation people just think that oh i am not good at ideation i cannot come up with new ideas well that's not the right way to look at it okay what you need to do is you need to practice your mind into thinking from different different perspectives so what these heuristics do is they help you practice what other how else can i apply it? how else can i apply it? now as you get more and more experience what will happen is these 10 heuristics become a part of you no matter what every workflow you'll automatically do it whether you like it or not you will have automatically analyzed it and you would have solved it that way okay but then what will happen is that is a mechanics like i say you know if you want to learn dancing you need to know how to walk so the heuristic based thinking is walking you should be able to do it unconsciously once you do that then you start thinking about different ideas different ways of solving it now you truly are in the creative space you are doing something that nobody else has done so that is where heuristics will come in now one thing to apply if you go back so notice that what saurabh has said right first you identify the errors then you do the ideation why did he say that the errors are non negotiable you cannot negotiate whether you will plan for error error or not you have to do it 
But when you are ideating, you can ideate even at an error level. How do I solve this error in a more interesting way? You can ideate on that, isn't it? So even solving errors should be an ideation topic. So I mean, classic example, right? If you look at your Google Chrome, you know they had an error where okay, okay, my internet is not working. What does it do? Gives you the dinosaur game. That is somebody who's ideated about how to solve the error problem itself. So errors also are very valuable places where you can start thinking and ideating. So remember, there is a heuristic, right? So uh, after the error, here people recognize uh, and recover from the error. Diagnose, recognize, and recover from the error. So that is what you ideate at the error level. Now, before the error, you are basically saying error, error protection, right? Mm-hmm. So how do you solve it before? So when you do the whole workflow, including errors, that is when the quality of ideas become much, much better. Okay, and this is also something that you guys, when you form your micro groups, you can challenge each other in. Okay, I did this. Can you challenge me? Okay, is there a better way to do it? Is there a better way to do it? A lot of times, ideation works really well when you can say, "Wow, that guy thinks so differently. Oh, this person thinks so differently." And so, like you know, you actually start picking up their styles of ideation, and they start picking up your styles of ideation. That is how you become stronger and stronger. Okay, so in order to ideate, you need to know the complete lay of the land that is non-negotiable, and then you can ideate on any part of it or all of it. So, and also this is one of the heuristics as well, right? So, error prevention, recognizing, diagnosing, and recovering from the error. So, yeah, you apply heuristics contextually to come up with workflow ideas, right? And we'll we'll look at the examples as well. But yes, document pros and cons for each workflow and decide on the best one as per the context and the goal that you have defined. So let's look at uh, one quick example, and you tell us uh, what are the pros and cons for this variation. So the goal is design a fast and effective registration experience for a chat application for a smartphone. So you have an onboarding screen. You start from there. You have account creation screen. You create an account in which you have to give name, email, password, phone number, captcha. You get the verification email. Once you get uh, get through the verification process, yeah, in your account creation, uh, you can enter the verification code received, and then you can go to home, and then you can start using the application. So now this is one flow of doing the registration experience. What are the pros and cons here? Yes, as you have seen that I, we don't require that much steps, right? To simply registering some chat application in a smartphone right so but still the pros are you are getting detailed customer information that you can collect when you are you know allowing them to sign up through smartphone but yes con is you have the lengthy process as there are a lot of steps and also the effort because there is email password captcha phone number verification and all those things uh, let's look at the other variation that we have for the same goal that we have now here you are what you are doing is you are simply in account creation in the first screen you are saying that the user can enter their mobile number verify the otp uh, otp automatically from their received sms and the action is register me and you are able to directly use the uh, services that is there now what is what are the pros and cons here okay so what you are talking is okay yes it is fast simple and effective because there is not a lot of steps that are there so that you can start using the app as soon as possible but cons is you are not able to collect all the personal information you might need to collect later